Karen, I am so excited to learn all about play personalities. I know so many kids have such different interests and I have to tell you, I did take the play personality quiz that you'll get to. And it's so funny what I do now as an adult that I, I can reflect and I was not at a child um, that personality, but we're so excited to learn from you all about play personalities today. So thank you for being with us, Karen. Thank you for inviting us. Um, I'm Karen. I'm the co-director of Toy Like Me and play consultant for Mix Mups. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to delve into play personalities today. OK, so today we're delving into our play personalities and how this may affect us. Now, before we go, let's take a moment to remember your childhood and the time in your childhood when you played. Was it outside, inside with toys, friends or on your own? What were you doing and how did it make you feel? Hold on to that feeling as we go through our slideshow. So our play is unique to us and the situations that trigger our play states are determined by our personality and by our wire braining at birth. Now, this is not a science lesson, but I couldn't resist putting in the little image of little neurons together of your brain. And you can see as a newborn, they've got lots of space. But when they get to two years old, they've been firing and they've connected. And this is the value of play. And this is why um, we need to make sure that we give our children lots of play opportunities. And I love this quote that says neurons that fire together wire together because that's what makes us so complex as humans. So elements of play. Now we might think, when we think of play, we think of activities and when you know we've got an image of what we're doing, but actually the essence of play is a state of mind. And these are the elements of play that need to be present for it to be essentially play. So it needs to be chosen by the child. It needs to be structured by rules. Um, it needs to be intrinsically motivated. So that child needs to come from within. It's often imaginative and creative, and that child needs to be fully engaged to be in that state of play. Now, that state may look like lots of different activities, but to be play, it needs to tick all of those boxes because it is a state of mind. And this is what comes from that state of mind, a sense of mastery. And that sense of mastery comes from a whole lifetime. And if you see play like this, from within, it doesn't matter what abilities, what disabilities your child has, they will find out how they will need to learn. So if your child is visually impaired, they might need a big red ball to look at the ballness of the ball and what is round and can I push this? Can I roll over it? So when you look at play from this internal point of view, you realize that there is no additional element to playing with um, children with additional needs because they know how to do it themselves and you're there as their enabler um, and I think what we need to look at is our own play personality so then we can become a very positive play partner a cooperative and authentic play partner to help our children develop I've been really geeking over Stuart Brown. He is a play guru and he really is my hero. And he was talking about, and he's identified eight different play personalities. And they're down here, the joker, the kinesthete, the explorer, the competitor, the director, the collector, the artist, and the storyteller. Hmm, now, which one are you? I'm, I've, got a, I've got a sneaking sub suspicion. I know which one Melissa is, but we'll wait until the end to find out. So if you have a think about who you might be, these are, they, I won't read all of this. Um, you'll have access to the PowerPoint, but these are what the play personalities may look like. It's pretty obvious. The director might enjoy planning and, you know, doing things that are directing people and they get a real joy from bringing people together. The artist, as you may think, loves to be creative. The kinesthete, um, is always active, is always doing something. A lot of kinesthetes are actors and dancers and sports people. Jokers, who doesn't love a joker? Um, I bet there's some jokers among us. Um, moving on, the competitor. What happens when you've got that play personality that you always want to compete? The collector, and this actually does have some quite strong crossover with play schemas too. So, um, the collector gets joy from finding things. Storytellers, they're imaginative, they're creative. A famous storyteller is Steven Spielberg. I think he's, he's taken the test and he is a, um, a storyteller. Um, explorer, 
loves to see new places and people, typically extroverted. And this person often seeks out novelty and craving that feeling of adventure. So which one are you? Hmm, we'll have to see. And it's interesting, to, independent on your personality, is how you see things, objects and experiences. So here you might see, ah, OK, we've got a collection of apples and um lovely autumnal things from trees. So a director, what might a director do with that if they're playing? They might direct people to like collect one apple and go around, or they might tell people to do a game that involves apples and um, autumnal objects. A creator might create a picture. A kinesthete might think, let's make um, a, a sports activity out of this. And you have to go and collect all the apples as quickly as possible. You see where I'm coming from, the same, um, object the same experience looks different to you dependent on your play personality and this again has crossovers with play schemes so a collector might just just love collecting the apples and the leaves and the acorns and everything like that storyteller might have a beautiful story about a poison apple or you know a magic apple so what it what this might mean depends on their play personality so when was the last time you played how did it feel? Can you still remember that feeling? And when you observe your child, do you observe a play cue from your child? Now, a play cue is a really important part of play. It's this process of the child transmitting their thought or idea out into the world. It's an invitation. It's an enticement. And the play cue can be quite subtle, such as holding eye contact or it can be a more obvious action. Now, some of our children with their visual impairment might find play cues pretty tricky to interpret. And that's a really important part of developing socialization. So you might have to vocalize that play cue for your child. Um, and then children will then understand that your child needs that vocalization. And then if you've got the play cue, you've got the play return. And then it goes a bit like a tennis match, backwards and forwards and flow. And this all depends on what sort of play partner you are, whether you're playing with your child or whether the children are playing together. And so um, what I want you to do now is to take that idea of play and remember how that made you feel and identify when was that time that you become so absorbed that you lost track of time. Now, these sort of activities are a good clue to the kinds of activities that will be playful for you today. And I really recommend that you do take the play um, personality test because it's actually quite enlightening. Go on, Melissa. I really want to hear about what play personality you are. So it's so interesting because as a child, I know that I was not. But as an adult, I feel I am the director after, you know, it's a simple eight question. It was really interesting. But it was kind of like, do I answer this as now or answer this as a kid? Because... I was not the director as a kid. As a kid, I was very creative, probably more on the storytelling or very imaginative. And so it's interesting how that has shifted. But being aware of that and with my daughter, she's very much the storyteller, very much imaginative. And so it's it's interesting because I can go back to that childhood uh, play and bring that back. It's very interesting. It was good to do. Oh, that's great. No, I did. I did have a sneaky suspicion you might be a director with your position now. But yeah, I think you've highlighted a really important point about how how we develop. And maybe that director was always in your your personality. Um, but no, I think if you do take the personal play personality test, take it with a pinch of salt, but also um, maybe try it out with your children, maybe try it out with your friends, because it is interesting, because I think if we do want to be um, a very proactive play partner with our children it's important that we connect with our inner child and inner play personality. Karen I can't thank you enough again what a wonderful session and really diving into us as adults but really how do we engage with our children and what they're interested in so thank you so much for sharing all about play personalities. Thank you for inviting me Melissa. Bye.